good afternoon everybody it looks like it's 301 today is Friday January 3rd 2020 and uh, this is market market Township Board special meeting and if you join us in the pledge we'll start with that please to the Republic for which it stands one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all Thank you much. Randy, roll call, please. Trustee LaRue. Here. Trustee Wiegand. Here. Trustee Everson. Here. Trustee Marks. Present. Treasurer Johnson. Yes. Secretary is here, and Supervisor Duran. Here. Uh, staff present is our legal counsel, Roger Zappa. Great, thank you. Do we have any public comment? Anybody would like to address the board before we get started? Feel free. Okay, no board member comment. I don't believe we have any declarations of um, any conflicts. Any approval of the agenda? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Uh, policy discussion, consideration, and development today includes candidate interview for the position of Mo Tar oh, goodness, this is going to be good. Township manager, uh, candidate number four, Dennis. If you'd like to come up to the table, you'll be by the microphone. Microphone is on, also. So we have done this before, so we'll try to follow the same same line it's just been a little while uh, we have all of the board has received your application your all the um, introduction letter reference checks that were done with the questions and the answers to those people uh, we do have the actual application I think that's about it we have been doing about an hour, hour and 15 minutes, roughly. Each, each board member will ask you a question and answer however you think you can. There can be back and forth. They know that they can ask a little bit of follow-up questions if we need to. Um, I'd like you to start with giving us something of you, whatever you want to share, maybe 10 minutes even or whatever. So roughly 10 minutes per question, and then a follow-up at the end. So that's where that kind of hour, hour and 15 minutes comes in, somewhere in there. Okay. So I mean, not, not on a timer or anything, but just as a guideline. Um, so if any, everybody's ready, we're okay? All right. So if you want to start by sharing whatever you'd like. Sure, I'd be happy to. First off, uh, thanks for having me. I um, appreciate the, uh, you know, that uh, reaching back out to me um, after I'd withdrawn my name from consideration. Um, obviously, I had a uh, health issue um, that came up out of uh, nowhere, unexpected, and uh, I thought in all fairness that it was um, appropriate for me to withdraw my name from consideration because I didn't think I would be able to uh, meet your timeline, um, knowing that I was going to have to spend the next 60 days focused on myself. So uh, I did appreciate the uh, reconsideration by the board and the invitation to come back and talk to you all. Um, I can tell you that uh, without uh, giving you my medical history here, I can tell you that I'm doing very well. Um, I, I uh, went into rehab and uh, for uh, this issue and uh, it, uh, everything's going well. It was really um, unfortunate genetics and uh, I believe we've reversed those and I'm doing very, very well. So. Um, Again, thanks for the reconsideration. Most of you all know me uh, since I was here four years ago for six years, uh, sitting in uh, Supervisor Durant's seat. Um, so most of you know my background, but uh, for those of you who, who may not, um, clearly I was in the private sector for about 30 years. I worked for an oil company, a uh, couple different uh, Fortune 50 companies in both uh, tobacco and uh, pharmaceuticals. Um, before I jumped into uh, politics and I found out that uh, you know working together um, I think that we accomplished a lot in the six years that I was here 
I think the board and clearly the uh, stable management that uh, Manager Gerard has offered for the last 17 years uh, moved this township forward uh, a great deal. And I think the, the board certainly has, has continued to do that. One of the things that came out of that is I found out I had a real knack for it and I enjoyed uh, the heck out of it. Although I, I'm going to tell you this, um, I much prefer being on the other side of the uh, table than being on the political side. Um, you guys have tough jobs. Politicians, um, you know, it's a thankless job for a lot of a lot of times. But the things that you guys can do uh, to make a difference in your community is the rewarding part. I found that from my part, and I've been a township uh, superintendent, Grand Blanc Township, for the past four years or a little over four years. Um, I still get to do that same thing, but I don't have the uh, politics involved. And quite frankly, I love making an impact in the community, but I don't particularly care for the politics. Uh, so this worked out very well for me. I've had a tremendous amount of success in there, it, down there for the last four years. Uh, took what I learned from here over six years, especially when it comes to township governance, and uh, applied it down there. I've got uh, a different board than the board that hired me. And the board that hired me, um, there's four of those changed out in the last election. Um, and we're still uh, accomplishing a lot. The Grand Lake Township obviously is a growing area. We've revamped some things that have made a tremendous amount of difference, saved millions of dollars in the process. A lot of it had to do with unfunded liabilities. Um, and then uh, some of the things were just really uh, encouraging the board to adopt more policies that helped us uh, stay focused and uh, and really try to get the work of the people done. And I'm very proud of my accomplishments down there um, for the last four years. And, uh, you know, it's not like I was looking for work. I don't have resumes out, but obviously when Randy announced his retirement, there was really only one position that, um, I, you know, I, that I was interested in pursuing. And for obvious reasons, you all know that uh, my wife and I are, are uh, youpers and, we're displaced youpers right now uh, downstate. I've got a tremendous opportunity down there. We've got tremendous opportunities for growth. I still have work to do. Um, but again, this opportunity uh, came up, and, and that's what piqued my interest to take a look and say, man, if it's Marquette Township, um, you know, whether this works out or it doesn't work out, uh, I think most of you know that we intend to be back here at retirement anyway. So we'll be here one way or another. Just this one might be quicker <laughs> than the other one. Um, and uh, with that, I mean, that's kind of my background. You know, you know, we're, we're obviously, uh, we're Marquette Township folks, we're Marquette folks, and we love the UP. Since I left four years ago, we're back here generally once a month for a long weekend. Um, I think the longest time that we've gone since we left was uh, two months uh, without being back up here. So um, it's not like we, we've left and, and never looked back. We're, we've been back here constantly. We watch your meetings, we read the paper, we watch your minutes. I mean, we're, you guys are doing a heck of a job. Um, that's it. Great, thank you for that. Okay. We can start with John. I have the first question for you. Describe your understanding of charter township government and the difference from general law government if you could sure um, the uh, primary reason that uh, charter township the charter township that came about was to protect uh, bigger townships charter townships from annexation and there's some other things that go along with that but when you look at general law townships and charter Townships clearly, I mean, the number of trustees you can have seven uh, or should have seven with a charter township. Um, but really, the biggest thing on a charter township, you are you become ruled by that charter. So there's a lot more things that come into play. You can have a superintendent or a manager. Um, if you go with a superintendent, the superintendent statutorily has the A through O's, as they're generally referred to in the um, red book that the MTA puts out. Uh, but again, the biggest thing is, is protection from annexation. One of the, the fears of a township governance is that, you know, when you look at us as township government, and I think the most exciting thing about it is that it's the closest to the people, right? I mean, it really is the closest to the, to the people. You're not representing any districts or anything else. Each and every one of you that gets elected to office represents the entire um, population of your township. 
when bigger cities run out of space and they need they needed room to move it became real easy for them to annex townships because you didn't have the wherewithal in a lot of cases to to uh, put yourself up against them um, and that was that was really the driving force behind the charter township act was so that it gave you that level of protection so that you could protect yourselves from annexation from other municipalities thank you appreciate it okay i have the next question the board has adopted policy governance describe your understanding of it and how the manager's position relates to the board sure um great question policy governance um really came about uh john carver was a guy who kind of developed it and wrote the book um, he really looked at policy governance as taking an organization and um, really b making sure that it's driven by policies so that everybody understands their roles and responsibilities, reporting relationships. And uh, so with policy governance, adopting policy governance means that you create a, uh, basically your policies that say this is how we're going to run and here's the things that are not acceptable to us. And so the township manager and policy governance and township government, um, all of the power still resides, and this is one of the fears that a lot of people had about adopting policy governance, is that the power would shift to the manager from the elected officials. Nothing could be further from the truth. The elected officials develop those policies and they say, here's what's okay to do, here's what we wanna have happen. And then on their part, they accept however that gets carried out. They allow the manager the wherewithal to carry out their goals and objectives. At the same time, if the manager is not carrying them out in the same vision that the uh, board had, then the board sets those limitations in place. It is not okay to fill in the blank. Um, this is what we don't like. So the, the greatest thing about policy governance is that it really does, people need to know how to operate in an environment and, and being driven by policy does just that. When something comes up and it comes to, whether it's on an administrative side or a legislative side, when something comes up, you look at it and say, is there policy that deals with this? If there isn't, should there be? If there is, how do we follow it? How do we carry it out? Or has it been carried out um, per policy? So policy governance is a very um, powerful tool in any organization. Um, if it's done right. And then the reporting relationship from a manager's perspective is you set it out the year in advance on how you want that reporting to come before you. You want the manager to be able to come in and say, here's the policies you have and here's how I'm carrying them out. So on a monthly basis, you're gonna see reports coming in and that's your opportunity to really verify that the manager is following the policies as envisioned by the legislative body. Great, thank you. Ernie, you've got the third question. Okay. Describe the process you would follow to establish a strategic plan. Um, that's a great question. Uh, strategic planning, I think, is so important, um, especially in government, but in any organization. One of the things about strategic planning for a governmental unit is that it's you really need to take a look at the stakeholders that are uh, engaged in this so you really have to reach out you have to find out what the residents business owners taxpayers of your municipality what they want to see and so the first part about strategic planning is you've really got to open it up and, and get some feedback you've got to get uh, as many meetings as you can to bring folks in so that you have the ability to say how are we doing how are we spending your money are we doing the right things are we doing the wrong things what could we do differently what can we do better what haven't we delivered that you need in this community and you take all that information and it can be you know first off you guys have done a great job at roads 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 snow plowing snow plowing snow plowing my taxes are too high but then you really boil it down to you get to the things that you can impact and then from a legislative body's perspective you have to narrow that down to items that can reasonably be achieved number one 
that you can afford to achieve and that you can uh, get done in a reasonable time frame. So if you pick your top three to five items, say, then you need to involve administration where really from a budgeting standpoint, what can we afford to do? Because as a budget manager, your administrative staff should be delivering some of that information to you saying, great, you want to do this. Here's what we can afford to do over the course of the next year, the three years, five years, 10 years, depending on how long you want to do it. Um, so you finally start to hammer it down. You come down to your five top items of your strategic plan. You develop a strategic agenda around them. You look at tactics, you find out who's going to be responsible for it, when are they going to be responsible for it, you put a workable time frame together. The thing about strategic planning is you kind of work backwards once you know the five goals that you've chosen. You start looking, what do I need in five years? Okay, for that to happen, what has to happen in four years, three years, two years, one year, and you work it back. It's the way you make strategic planning achievable. And then you can tell whether you're on the correct timeline or you're not on the correct timeline. The biggest thing also is the check-in and the accountability. The legislative body has this great strategic agenda. This is what we're going to accomplish in the next three years or five years or ten years. But then that accountability, who is supposed to carry it out? So you have to follow it up on a monthly basis. Where are we at in our strategic plan? How are we doing? Is the administrative staff carrying out what they said they were going to carry out? And then you also have to hold yourselves accountable for the parts that you want to make sure that, you know, you have to hold staff accountable and you have to hold each other accountable that, we, you know, you accomplish those things. Strategic planning, um, to me, is like one of the most key factors for successful governance. And you can run without strategic planning. Um, a lot of folks do. But when you really look at successful communities, take a look at their strategic plan, what they do from a strategic planning initiative. The successful communities know their strategic plan. They know where they're going. They know when they're going to get there. And they know who's responsible for carrying it out. Thank you. Hey, number four is Pete's. As a township manager, what would be your primary goal for the next year? And how would you accomplish it? years five years ten years whatever um, good question the uh, the primary goal of the first year and I can tell you this from four years ago when I went into a Grand Blanc Township obviously a bigger operation 160 employees some you know considerably bigger budget uh, but to walk in, in into that environment it doesn't matter the size it's you really have to take a look. It's not like I'm going to come in and say, I'm changing everything on day one. On day one, everything changes. That's not true. There's a lot of good. You guys are very, very successful here. Um, but are there improvements that can be made? I guarantee you there are. I have a, a motto, and I can certainly tell you that my staff meetings and every one of my department managers will be happy to tell you this, that we have staff meetings that only focus on continuous improvement and leadership every other week and we focus on what can we do to be better than we were before so it's really taking a critical look at your entire operation by department and challenging each other on a continual basis and I have the department managers actually lead those meetings so every other week there's going to be a different department manager who will be talking about what they're you know how we can change operations it doesn't necessarily have to be in their department the fire chief may have ideas that apply to the Department of Public Works or vice versa. It's more about that continuous improvement. You really have to focus on what do we do, how do we get better, how do we, you, you know, it's looking at budgeting overall when you do public sector budgeting. What's the goal of public sector budgeting? It's to maximize service delivery to taxpayers, right? And so, as an administrator, when you sit down and say, what are you going to do over the next year? The very first year is I have to take a critical look at the way we do business now. What's really working? What areas of improvement? But you really have to ask your folks. You've got to involve them. You've got to look at it. Um, you also have to reach out and talk to the people who deal with us, those the external customers and internal customers, about how are we doing? 
Like, tell me some about your issues. Do we have a good uh, feedback? Is it easy to get on our website and provide feedback about your experience when you came into the the uh, township hall? Or, or is there an easy way to provide feedback to us? How do you reach out to us? How do you let us know when we're doing things right, when we're doing things wrong? Those things are really critical. But during the course of that year, um, the one thing in the, <laughs> They learned it in Grand Blanc Township relatively quick. In fact, one of the labor union groups challenged me on it because I sent a memo out. I started on the end of August, and on, after the first of the year, I sent out a memo saying, if I hear anybody say, it's the way we've always done it, one more time, <laughs> heads are going to roll. I don't want to hear that's the way we've always done it. Um, it. You know, you do things sometimes because they're smart and they work, but if you're doing something because that's the way you've always done it, then you're doing it wrong. You, you got to take a critical look at every piece of your operation. And so that first year, this first 30, 60, 90 days is really a very critical look at service delivery. How are we doing? Are we doing the right things? Then you have to you know, really invest in your people and, and, like I said, challenge them with continuous improvement. How are you going to get better? And you challenge them with leadership. Show me how you're going to lead the organization. Show me what you can do differently. Show me how you can take us to the next level. Um, once you got that, uh, Trustee LaRue, then it's you know five years out, 10 years out. That never stops. You never stop challenging yourself. You never stop challenging the staff uh, because our environment changes. One thing that we, you know, we're always, we, we do more with less. You guys are no different than a lot of municipalities in the state of Michigan. Um, how's your revenue? Is it the same as it was in 2009, 2010? Um, you know, what's changed since that time? Have your costs gone up? Is your, does health care cost more? Does fuel cost more? I mean, all those things have gone up, yet we have the same revenue stream. And that's tough. That's one of the things that government has. So we have to look at every piece of the operation critically. How can we do something that saves us money? We've revamped everything from retiree health care to uh, current employees' health care. I mean, in the four years that I've been there, it, it's, it's millions of dollars worth of savings. It's millions of dollars worth of, worth of change in an organization that size. Um, and it really it comes down to taking a critical look, questioning everything. You've you got long-term relationships with folks who've been servicing your municipality for 25 years and they're not that there's anything wrong with them but it's okay to put out rfps and take a look and see if that long-term relationship should still be there um, relationships have a lot to do with it but financially you want to make sure that they're still delivering that service at a value that makes sense for taxpayers so it's a long-winded answer trustee larue but yeah. you know the first 30, 60, 90 is setting those expectations, and in that first year, you make some changes and let people see that the changes are good, that you're, you're giving them the autonomy. Uh, people crave the autonomy, being able to make decisions. They crave mastery. They want to be able to master their department or the work that they have to do, and you give them those opportunities and, and know that they've got support from, from everybody in the organization, um, and then let them go. Let them, let them show you what they can do and it'll save you money, I guarantee, or improve services, one or the other. Yep. Thank you. Thanks. Number five is Dan's question. Thank you for being here. Uh, realizing that our residents are our stockholders, how would you work with them to keep them informed, educated, and get their input? You know, that's really, uh, it, it's, it's critical, and it can be as simple as, um, especially when you're in uh, a small town and you know I, I manage a community now that has 40,000 residents yet if I'm standing in line at the Kroger and somebody says aren't you the superintendent you say absolutely how are we doing how are we spending your money um, it's a question that I asked back from when I was a supervisor here how are we doing how are we spending your money um, because it's a real easy feedback and sometimes it takes people it sets them back because nobody's ever asked them that question before. Um, and that's just a real easy reach out. But the other thing you have to do is that transparency is, is the communication. People have to trust government. And let's face it, there's an inherent distrust of government. Some of it was well-deserved, um, whether it's on the national 
uh, level, the state level. I mean, people have an inherent distrust. So y you start off with the deck stacked a little bit against you, but you have to go after that and fix it. You have to be able to, to be transparent. So I think that's one of the keys is making sure that um, you reach people the way they need to be reached, and whether that's through social media, whether that's through newsletters, whether that's through a uh, portal on your landing page that says, you know, do you have a complaint, a comment, a question? Um, you have to make it easy for folks to give you feedback. And then what's critical is you have to follow up on it. So what I had the IT guys at, at uh, Grand Blank Township do is change so that when that somebody responds on that portal and they want to file a complaint or just a question or whatever, that it goes to the appropriate person based on how they filled out the form, but it also copies me. And so that it might go to our planner, it might go to our assessor, but it always copies me as well. And then that starts the clock. We instituted a 24 hour turnaround time for every consumer comment. If a resident has a question or a business owner has a question, you have 24 hours to respond and it has to be documented. That 24 hour response is critical because even if you don't have the definitive answer, if you've reached out to somebody and said, I just want to let you know that I received your concerns, I'm following up on it, I don't have the answer, it might take me an additional 24 or 48 hours, but I need you to know that we're working on it and I need you to know that somebody will be in touch with you if you don't hear from us within that time frame. Make sure you call me, here's my number. Um, I think that's the most important thing is people need to know they're heard. And sometimes you're gonna give people information that they don't like, sometimes the answer is no. And sometimes that's really hard, especially from a staff member's perspective, to have to tell somebody no. Somebody says, I wanna do this. And you have to say, well, current policy says we don't do that. Um, they just need to know the why behind it. They still might be uh, upset they still might think you should do it I mean I can give you an example from us a, a group of homeowners association has private roads they never wanted to turn them over to the county to make them county roads now they're deteriorated and they need to be redone well we create special assessment districts down there if you want to do it we'll you know do it over a 10-year payback period and we'll do it but it has to be a county road not a it has a public road not a private road they came and said we want to we want to redo our roads said well it's the board's policy that we don't spend public dollars on private roads. Well, we're going to get a bunch of people and sign a petition. We're all going to come to a meeting. We're going to complain. I'm like, and you can do that. And here's our meeting schedule. But I have to follow policy. The policy is this, and it's there for a reason. It's about the extending the full faith and credit of the township for private purposes. If you did that, where would it end? So sometimes the answer is no, but you try to put the reasoning behind it. And I think that's critical too. Let people understand why you can't do something. Oh, you guys, you never listen to us out here. Um, we do listen to you, but it's the greater good, right, for the most number of people. And sometimes the answer is no. But it really is critical about the communication level has to be really high. You have to have self-imposed um, requirements for that turnaround time. I'll return calls at 7.30 at night from people and they're like, what's well, 7.30 at night? I'm like, right, I don't leave the office until I made sure that I've answered all the phone calls I had that day. It, it has to bleed back down to your staff. 24 hour, absolutely no excuses. Somebody better have gotten back to, the, to that person. And then just make sure you're being really transparent. Get it out, I mean, newsletters. Social media, I mean, social media is everything. I mean, everybody's, I mean, walk anywhere and somebody's got their phone in their hand. So, I mean, social media is a big one and it, it just has to be managed appropriately. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Question six is from Randy. On knowledge of Marquette Township, do you see any changes you would recommend in your first year as township manager? It's a, uh, <laughs> hey, you're putting me on the spot here. <laughs> it, it, you know, that, that's a great question. And what I will say is um, I've been gone for four years. Um, while I've watched uh, what's 
occurred over the four years. I mean, you guys have have done a phenomenal job. You've been keeping pace with the growth. There's some challenges, obviously, that we all experience, whether it be uh, I saw Meyer um, filed their tax tribunal case to get theirs lowered from $7 million to $4 million. I mean, I, I watch all those things happen. Um, so it's that revenue stream that we continue to have higher calls for service, but we have the same revenue stream. So what do you do? I mean, the, the raw materials that we have as a township are our people um, primarily and it's about what you do with your people and where are they placed so are there changes i can't tell you definitively right now that i can i will make some changes i can tell you that things won't stay the same um, probably as we work through it but as far as what specific changes need to be made in market township right now uh, you know I really I have to have a much more critical insiders look at that to, to know and then I also need the feedback from the board I mean you guys have to have the vision of, of where we're going and, and how you feel and so even looking at it from knowing what I know from being here for six years and and being gone for four years now um, how do you guys think we're doing I mean the, the, in order for me to truly answer that question I have to have the conversation I have to have the direction from the seven individuals that are sitting up up there that are providing the vision and the direction uh, that you want to take the township in. Good. Uh, number seven is from Dave. Yeah, where do you uh, see yourself in five years and where do you see the township in that same five years? Well, uh, dep <laughs> depending on how this goes um, or whether it doesn't, I mean, in five years we're probably I mean, we want back up here, and that's no secret. This is home, right? And it, it, this has always been home for us, and, and we want to come back up here. So if uh, this was able to work out and, and I'm able to be here for five years, um, I could be, I'm so energized about where we want to go. Number one, I just love governance. I love working in government. Um, as crazy as that sounds for some people, especially after spending 30 years in the private sector, um, the public sector is, is a little bit different but uh, it, it is so much more rewarding than the private sector ever was. Where could I take myself in five years? Um, the growth opportunities and what the township has go hand in hand for both me personally and for the township. You guys are so poised to, to continue um, controlled growth. I think it's very important that you take the time to do appropriate strategic planning. I think it's very important that you take the time to, to follow your master plan and fully engage in the master planning process. Um, you, you know, going back and we, we talked about uh, when I'd first started in uh, Marquette Township government, man, if we only would have put a feeder road off of, you know, 41 so that we could have controlled some of that traffic so we didn't have so many driveways. Um, right now, you guys have the opportunity for five years ahead of us. What, what can we change? What can we do? That's why I think the, the vision aspects of the legislative body and what you guys have to do, um, you guys are going to grow. You've got available land. Um, it is so crazy here even with um, hotel rates. I know because I pay for hotel rates up here every month. Uh, where they've gone because the amount of tourism that's coming up here people are embracing the lifestyle the active outdoor lifestyle you guys have this opportunity and all this available land you're going to continue to grow um, but it has to be controlled growth because I don't think you want to lose the character of Marquette Township right um, I, th I think that uh, as long as the board continues to embrace strategic planning like you have and you continue to, to create that vision for the future. Um, if I'm lucky enough to be here to help carry that out, I think that we can work together and, and do some amazing things together. I mean, it's, a, it's really about um, bringing a plan to fruition, getting that plan down, and, and you tell me where you want to go, and I'll help you get there. I'll show you the alternatives, and, and I'll help you get there. Thanks. Okay, thanks. I have a small follow-up. I just read yesterday that Pure Michigan may be reconsidered by the governor the pure michigan funding was scrapped completely that's going to have a big impact on the marquette area i don't know how it would be in blank, grand blank how how touristy that is next to traverse city and um do you see that being a challenge then for for the state the county? you know i read a lot of information on that pure michigan campaign 
and there's obviously um, there's two sides to it, right? There's people who are saying they just don't see the the ROI on the investment that, that was going into Pure Michigan campaign. Um, and it's one of those things where is it's it's not a concrete investment. It's like making bike trails, right? I mean, what's the ROI on bike trails? Well, your people don't pay to use bike trails, but they come and they stay and they move here and the value of your homes, the amount of tourists that come. Grand Blake Township isn't a tourist destination by any means. That's where all the folks who are following the Pure Michigan campaign are coming from. Southeast Michigan, you know, everyone's heading north. Um, and it, it's that thing where the Pure Michigan campaign, anytime that you can tout uh, what's going on, the lifestyle, um, I mean, there's people who are still in Southeast Michigan are like, the UP, oh my God, like that's like a 12 hour drive. And like, well, no, it's, it's a six hour drive and it's really pretty easy. You know, it's, it's that to overcome the barriers. Um, I think the, the Pure Michigan campaign, I believe has had a good ROI. Uh, if you're driving on I-75, whatever, you see those billboards, right? You hear the ads, um, will it have an impact on it? You guys are a tourist destination. I think you'll continue to grow. I think it's so fantastic to be a biking community. And um, we've always been lifelong bikers, right? And to move into an area like ours, there's no bike trails in our entire community. It's 36, you know, square mile block of, you know, it's got like one mile of bike trail in it. We've been trying to work on grants to get it, but it's really hard and not everybody embraces it or understands what can happen if you do things like that, that will, will create an opportunity for somebody who wants to come it's not just the tourism, it's the folks who will come and live in your community because they get a chance to experience the lifestyle. So I think that, you know, I like the investment in Pure Michigan. Um, I hope they reinstate it and put money into it because if they don't, then you, you're going to have to do a real good job of, of blowing your own horn. And sometimes that's uncomfortable doing, but man, uh, you guys have so much to offer here. It's just, it, it, it's just crazy. The, 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 the things that the active lifestyle that that you can offer especially for young folks it's what they're looking for you know and, it, and i think um over the if you start looking for the next 10 years 20 years down the road for market township uh 20 years from now that's why i said it's so important to master plan 20 years from now you, you'll be if you left and came back you'd be so surprised at what this community is going to look like let's make sure we you know that we focus on keeping that good you know you provide a nice small town upper michigan friendly you know kind of thing and i don't think you guys if you, if you spend as much time in southeast michigan as we do where you know you get up here and you're just walking through downtown marquette and people are like hi how you doing we we walked you know presque isle this morning everyone's like hello hey how you doing um if you do that downstate people are oh, you freak them out <laughs> it's about um it, it's such a cool environment i mean it, this is such a cool place to live uh, I think you guys are, are going to be successful with just, you know, controlled growth and, and make sure you control it. But, yeah, I mean, you, you might need to invest a little bit in, in uh, your own marketing campaign. Okay, thank you. Number eight is my question. Why should we hire you? Wow, what a great question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the... Uh, it, it, I give you a lot of reasons why you should hire me. Um, I, and obviously, uh, you guys know my background. You know um, what I did uh, when I was here for six years. I'm a huge proponent of Marquette Township and Marquette in general. Uh, but Marquette Township, I just, you know, again, the quality of life, the what we can do, the things that we can accomplish together. Um, and you look at my background, I have, a, I have a history of getting things done. I have a history of making, turning things into reality. Um, we can control our expenses. Uh, I've got a history of that. We can move forward on strategic plan and get things done. When we first started, you know, 2009, uh, if you recall that first strategic planning process and we developed our strategic agenda and we put our items that we were gonna get, we put it on a banner and we hung it behind it ourselves so that we could look at it and say we're going to be accountable for what we said we're going to get done um, I'm a big proponent of that I think you have to not only plan but you have to tell people this is what we're going to do this is how we're going to do it here's the tactics here's the timeline and then you get it done and I got a track record I can do that and that's the difference I mean it's it's about 
you know, you tell me where you want to go, and I'm going to help you look at the alternatives, and I'm going to help you get there. And, and that, that first and foremost, uh, number one, I'm a huge proponent for Marquette Township. And one of the first start stop continues that I did with my staff down there <laughs> it's like um, kind of 360 degree coaching right hey you guys I coach you up you coach me I said so start stop continue I leave the room in a staff meeting and I say here's three columns start stop continue what should I start what should I stop what should I continue doing the only thing they put in the stop uh, was quit talking about Marquette Township <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, I'm a big proponent of, of not only the lifestyle, but uh, the governance model and the things that we accomplished up here. And, and I think I can help you all carry that out. Great. Thank you. Any follow-up questions? Anybody else wants to ask? Randy, go ahead. Yes, I got two follow-up questions. Um, Dennis, what do you, what do you uh, envision in a s smaller township like us for legacy planning? Like... Um, for um, like staff staff positions and maybe cross training and different things, I know you got a bigger staff where you're at. But what do you envision? Like, do we uh, for like backup and positions and things? You know, I think that's critical, um, Clerk Rotari. It's it's no matter how big or small your staff is. Um, in fact, it's probably even more critical in a smaller staff because you don't have as many people underneath in that hierarchy that can help get you through and, and it could be as simple as a health issue or uh, somebody who just ends up uh, leaving the employment for whatever reason y you know your taxpayers your residents again we talk about how do you develop a budget you it's all about how do you uh, increase the service delivery to taxpayers you can't lose a critical component and have somebody drop out and say well we're just not going to be able to carry out assessing functions or we just can't carry out you know planning functions until uh, we get this position filled so it's critical that you figure out ways to, to make uh, people uh, not only have a broader base knowledge um, but also you know encourage people to do it just because in a smaller operation even just answering phone calls or dealing with somebody who walks in or you're standing in a stores line and somebody oh you work for the township can I ask you a question you know I had an issue with water and I didn't understand why the more knowledge that you can provide folks that they can answer that question I think it's critical so a lot of it has to do with even just having people cross trained by spending some time in the department and then making sure that if you have to create a cheat sheet at first from a department, if you have somebody answering the phone, I've got a question, but it's about my water bill. Oh, that person's not in right now. Can you call back? Or we can have somebody call you back in a couple hours, or she's on vacation for two weeks. Um, that's the wrong answer. It, it, you have to be able to answer those questions. So I, I think it's, it's, I mean, it just becomes so readily apparent that everybody, if you are in charge of that department, you want that kind of customer service level. So you should be also coming up with a plan to reach out to your colleagues to say, I need somebody who, who can understand and who can cross those lines and be able to answer those questions or, or to be able to cross train. So you just never know. I mean, life's fickle, right? And you just never know. Somebody leaves or, you know, just nails or filling vacation. So um, I think it's something you work on instantly. Okay, and then my second follow-up is, how do you envision Marquette Township in the region? How do you look at our relationships with the adjoining municipalities? It, you know, it's, uh, if you recall 2009, even when I first um, got involved with Marquette Township government, and uh, it's still somewhat, I mean, it, it's, you know, between the city and the township, and that exists everywhere. It exists in Grand Blanc between the city and the township. I mean, there's always this struggle about municipalities. Um, how well are you getting along with the county? I've watched the things that you guys have done with creating relationships. Uh, it, it hats off to Planner McCarthy because I know he's done a lot of the work with some of the things, making sure that we that you guys have gotten the grants. You know, working with MDOT, working with the county, working with the road commission, um, but all y'all as uh, the elected officials, that, that you, it starts with you. Uh, y y you have to be able to have those. Um, relationships people have to see you as a resource that we're all in this together but obviously you know when you look at uh, 
every region, but even you just take Marquette County, for example, if somebody was looking to locate a business in Marquette Township, but we just don't have the available land or resource or whatever, would we be better off to say, sorry, we can't help you? Or are we better off to say, we can't accommodate you, but let me introduce you to somebody over in the city, or let me introduce you to somebody in Sands Township or Nagani Township that you may be able to locate that you know could accommodate your idea for your business. It, it, it's better to think regionally and really make sure you have those cooperative relationships. First and foremost, you protect your community. You want to tout your community, but you do that because nothing breeds success like success. A successful city of Marquette makes you more successful. A successful county makes you more successful. A successful central UP region makes Marquette Township more successful. So we can't be as parochial as we sometimes would like to be. You know, it's easy to get uh, your feelings bruised a little bit when you, you know, you lost a challenge with somebody like that. Um, but man, it, it won't help you in the long run. You, you, you really have to, you, you got to have that idea in your head that we're all in this together, that we, we want business here um, if you really truly want to be successful. And I, I think that, you know, from my track record when I was here before, in fact, just before I left here, I got a call from a county commissioner in Genesee County uh, just to chat before minutes before I left to come here. And I, I think it's so important that you stay in tune with your with your county officials. It's really important that you have you bridge that gap that you make sure. And you got to be a, you got to be somewhat of a cheerleader. You, you got to make sure that um, you know you 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 talk up the whole region, not you know just your your uh, own municipality you talk about man what a great place what a what a great place this is a great place to do business in fact in the township here's what we have available for you which is really great um but just coming here is, is really great and, and i think those relationships um, will pay dividends way into the future okay thank you dennis hey. how would you approach uh, trying to get uh, more businesses in market township i mean right now we're at we're, we got enough gas stations we got enough grocery stores but clothing stores and stuff like that we're just sitting here waiting like waiting for paint to dry you know for something to happen and the biggest complaint a lot of people say around here now is we need a clothing store we need a store like you know like we used to have is there anything that you've done downstate that would help us up here and so you're really talking about, you know, how do you become an economic driver, right? It's about economic development. Um, when I first got down in Grand Blanc Township, uh, one of the first few months I was there, I was kind of going through cleaning up my office from the prior superintendent, and, and uh, I came across a uh, thing from 2007 where they had this vision of creating a technology village. It was, a, it was envisioned as like an R&D park. And it would be an economic driver for for the whole thing. So I read through it, and you know, they started in 2007. They had a meeting. They had like 120 stakeholders come in and talk about how cool that would be, what impact that would have on the region, because they're really lacking, you know, restaurant, retail, jobs. We we outsource jobs. We we send 18,000 people a day, you know, out of our township to go to work in other areas. How can we get that here? When you talk about shopping experiences. People are going elsewhere. They go to Oakland County. They leave. So how do we keep that here? So I read through this thing, and so then I asked the board, uh, what happened? Well, obviously, 2008 happened. You know, the recession hit. They lost 35% of their taxable value. I mean, gone. They were cutting everything. So they stopped thinking about economic development. They focused on preservation. So by the time I got there in 2015, we were still at... 80% of the taxable value, but we'd grown uh, an additional, um, I mean, six or 700 residential, new residential housing permits. So the calls for service were up, our revenue was way down. Man, how do you even start thinking about economic development, right? So I took that plan and I looked at it. There was an area of a couple hundred acres and it's down the south end of, of the township down there. And I approached one of the property owners and had a conversation with him about forming a public-private partnership. Let's partner on this thing and let's flesh this plan out. Let's see if we can actually create this vision that was started, you know, in 2007. 
He was reluctant at first, and there was another development group that owned a parcel in that as well. Eventually got him to the table and agreed. The board, we formed a, a public-private partnership, and we had a uh, assessment, a market assessment study done with a vision of what could we do with this 200 acres of prime property with I-75 frontage. The offshoot of doing that was we partnered with them and created this vision and then based upon that market assessment, hired a big company out of Baltimore who does this nationally um, with a tremendous amount of credibility. They did surveys, they came back and they said, here's what you could build with 100% uh, certainty there's a market and they created an area that includes R&D light industrial, uh, kind of a downtown area with restaurants, retail, traditional office space, a lot of residential loft style living, but really that I-75 frontage and they put a conceptual plan together based upon that market assessment. Well, I've been meeting now with the developers. This you know, took time over the course of a couple of years. We finished the market assessment you know, towards the end of 2016. Um, but it's been a tremendous amount of work and then put it together. The last piece of that puzzle was forming a DDA. They didn't have one. So we started that process, finalized it uh, in May of 2019, created a DDA with a TIF plan around it. We were lucky in that we were able to keep Magna Electronics. They make all the backup cameras for cars. If you got a backup camera, it came from Magna Electronics. Um, we were able to keep them and retain 600 jobs. They built a new $50 million plant right inside the DDA. So we hurried up and got the DDA done so I could capture that taxable value. This DDA started off being really funded. Um, now we've got a developer there from out east uh, that we're putting together the final plans together. And it's going to have restaurants, retail, you know, clothing, uh, corporate headquarters, light industrial. We've got people already lining up who want to go in from the light industrial side, two firms. Um, it's about creating your opportunities, Pete. It's about finding available property and willing, you have to be willing to think public-private partnerships um, to, to help market yourself and market opportunities. You guys have a lot of available land. Um, is there areas here that we can do something like that with? Is there something within the DDA that you can create a DDA plan, a TIF plan around it to get a capture that you can, you know, that you can really go after something like that? Um, we put a plan together when I met with the developers a couple of weeks ago and the guys that flew in from the East Coast, I sat down and, and they say, well, you know, what could the DDA really do? And I say, uh, right off the bat, we're willing to put water and sewer through there. That's $4 million, but you guys have to put in an $8 million road knowing that it's going to get turned over to the county when you're done. But in exchange, we're going to put in that $4 million of water and sewer infrastructure to make this happen. So we just, not only have we shaved a year and a half to two years off the plan because we've done the market assessment, we've created a conceptual plan, we changed the zoning so that it's ready to go so you don't have any of those hurdles but the DDA is ready to go and we'll take care of those capital fees, we'll take care of putting the means in um, and show them really what the DDA, when they put their plan together, they'll put you know a million and a half towards uh, even uh, landscaping and streetscaping and signage. I mean, you, you, you have to create your own opportunity. You create this vision and then you work with somebody to sell it. I mean, that property sold for $4 million, the two parcels. Um, Again, we didn't have like you know a dog in the hunt as far as like getting that property sold, but these people were willing to work with us to, to let us change the zoning to do those things. So there are things you can do. You have to be your own economic developer. Um, you know, you guys work with economic development people up here, and so do we down there. Uh, economic development people, and I hate to say this, but they're really good at creating jobs in economic development. <laughs> Um, but sometimes you think how frustrating, like what about the jobs that I really want? This is what we need here. We want some, we want some living wages so we can keep our kids here. You can create those things. You just have to be creative. You got to think outside the box and you got to have willing participants. You got to find property owners or developers who are willing to work with you. Thanks. Okay. Anybody else? Ernie? Being a township superintendent as you are, and looking how that really lays out within a township, where a supervisor is there, but the superintendent is there. How would you see being manager, being relationship to the supervisor, looking at what you're doing now and what you would be doing then? 
How would you say that would work out? No, it, that's an excellent, excellent question, um, Ernie. Uh, Treasurer Johnson, the you know what's the biggest difference between a superintendent and a manager? <laughs> superintendent statutorily, again the A through O's are the superintendents, right? You're, you statutory the, the the state of Michigan in their infinite wisdom said, if you guys want to hire a superintendent, then statutorily he's responsible for these items versus the supervisor. If you hire a manager, it's the same thing as long as it's whatever has been given to him in writing. The, the difference is that the supervisor has the ability to uh, withdraw some of those things. I want to be the personnel manager. I want to be, you know, fill in the blank, whatever. Um, does it make a difference in how you operate the day-to-day -day operations? You're still charged with day-to-day -day operations. The, you know, what you don't have is the statutory authority behind you to make those decisions. So um, if it's just, it's a, it's a difference. I mean, if the elected official wants to take on some of those responsibilities, it just has to be in writing. So from my standpoint, as far from being a manager, it's gotta be in writing. I need to know what I'm responsible for and what I'm not responsible for. Um, I, I'll take on all the accountability you wanna give me, um, but don't hold me accountable if, if you don't let me do the job, right? And I think that's the biggest thing is it's just gotta, the expectations have to be very clear and it has to be spelled out. Um, and then I don't think it's, it's all that much different. Well, thank, you. thank you. Anybody else? How about some business questions a little bit? Um, looking at your application, there were some items that were missed. I don't know if because of the circumstances you had when you um, completed it, they aren't critical, but there were some blank spots, one of which was not getting all of the reference people that we were kind of looking for. Part of that was confidentiality that was imposed, which was fine because we had that from other candidates too. Um, I don't know if it's important to the board to have, um, we were looking at maybe members of your board as a follow-up reference. This is kind of after the fact, but I wanted to make sure they had the opportunity to say whether or not they care if we have any more references we had an engineer two engineers and an attorney I believe and you and I talked about having a board member or some of your staff so I just want to give the board an opportunity in case they felt they wanted different perspectives on references uh, does that matter to anybody anything you want to some of the reference that we have he's been here before you know he's been supervisor he's gone out and that's what you really like for like for a person I mean we take you know, our employees and our lead people we send them for education well in some cases he went out for additional education because he went to work for Grand Blank that's a bigger thing he, lots of things you can see what we can use up here uh, I don't know I don't that's fine that's fine. It, it's just yeah. I would just like to see we got our mall, malls and up there and you know you read things that malls going out and then you read some more or something else about the malls are coming back and we just want stores in the mall if they're going to be here to be benefit to the township we want any business up to be a benefit we don't want to just fill up a lot or fill up a store you know and that's why my question is how do we go about something like that so mm -hmm. anybody else dave i would <clears throat> as opposed to additional references i would i would think that in consideration of the uh, confidentiality up until today's meeting um, and but then you take a look at his former association with Marquette Township I would hope that before <clears throat> we consider any kind of a recommendation with respect to this that we do it at a later meeting so that we have an opportunity for the residents to weigh in uh, because I'm sure they all have an opinion out there they've dealt with here for six years it would be nice to hear some of those uh, opinions and I would hope we for that reason I would hope we would hold off on a decision uh, recommending it one way or the other until we hear some get some feedback from them and I'm, I'm saying not forever I'm saying at least put off that any decision to recommend one way or the other um, until at least this next scheduled meeting yeah I forgot to say that uh, and it didn't end up on next week's agenda either that we would schedule 
a work session or special meeting like we did last time <coughs> for the other interviews sometime after next week to sit down and talk about this then rather than we weren't going to make a decision today I was I should preface the meeting with that but that was the format we had covered before and had our discussion asked, asked our questions and then had the follow-up meeting afterward so we will put that on Tuesday's agenda to schedule a follow-up meeting special or work session or whatever for, special meetings are better discussion because, at that time right probably a special meeting so that we can uh, just make a just motion. a reminder to everybody there was a previous candidate that was proposed and there were no stipulation about any such goings on before. Or as community input. Oh yeah. We, that's right. Votes were taken. The vote was the vote or the motion was made without any other previous discussion about what's been proposed today. Yeah, it's our decision. He's, uh, the person's our employee. That's, you know, I mean, they've worked for the township too, but it's so our I, I don't understand the, why you would treat another candidate differently. Well, he just. It, the question, I, I guess I do that. understand why you want to treat another candidate differently, but I don't approve of it. Okay. Ernie? I, I'm not following this at all. Getting back to what we're talking about for references and that, maybe I had too much of my background in hiring people and that. There's always been some references from wherever and that too. So I don't know if that caused you any problems with giving some of those references or not. I have no idea. And that we have a lot of information in front of us. I think that it's a board decision if we want to follow up for any requested uh, references from other individuals, uh, maybe because I've, I've interviewed so many people in my lifetime, and hired a lot of people, that uh, <clears throat> I look at everything that I possibly can look at before I make a decision in that too. So, And uh, looking at the three individuals there, I looked at that and I says, okay, we got good references there, but there are individuals who have, one way or another, have some contact with the township financial contact from what I see. And that is a, creates a problem for me at that point in time too. Because so, you don't know what they're gonna say, this and that, when you say two engineers and an attorney. So, they've done work for the township. Uh, I have no idea who they are, what their relationship was with, with their with given township at all, but I just look at, try to look at everything I possibly can before I make a final decision. I just brought it up because uh, most times when you're interviewing an applicant, you want to talk with either their previous employer or work people or their boss or somebody. And we didn't have that opportunity here. So if it's not important to anybody, that's fine. Dan, I think you were first. Yeah, I, I would like to say we know the candidate. We've, we've worked with the candidate for many years. Um, we just had um, a great interview with the candidate. In my opinion, he scored extremely high remark or high high grades with me, and for that reason, I would like to make a motion that we offer him the job. Ernie, motion. We need a second before we can go. Ernie had his hand up. No, okay. No. Were you supporting it? No. no. No, I see. I will not. All right. Okay. I'll support it for discussion. All right, then you're gonna have to wait, Dave, till we. Okay, go ahead, Dan. What's any follow-up? We've been we've been discussing this for a long time. We are we are there's there's no we have our manager that's willing to stay for some time. I think we owe it to Mr. Limita to give him an answer so he can plan on what he is going to do. Um, he's got a lot to do to make this work if he's willing to move up here and take the job. 
So I think the sooner that we can get this moving, the better. I don't think there's anybody out there that are his present em employers that would give him a bad mark. We can, we can still look into that, but you know, he's got different uh, um, qualifications that he has to, to meet to, take him, to get employment here first. So I think we should just offer the position to him today and, and make, take a vote on it. Okay, John. If this motion was to pass, it doesn't end all the discussion that will need to take place before it would become a reality. What you're doing here is just testing whether or not that a job would be offered if I understand the motion correctly, would be offered. There's a great deal of other discussion that needs to go on before it would become reality. Real. That, that's the point I'm trying to make as a supporter of the motion. I, I don't have any problem with it. And I think that uh, it, it isn't any different than the motion that was made previously on another candidate. In fact, it's very much the same. So, roll call vote. Okay. Um, Dave, you had your light on, but does it pertain to mm -hmm. this discussion? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. I guess to, to clarify my comments, and the reason I made the comment was um, in lieu of additional background, or in references, uh, because there is a history and an association with the township of some six years that I would be comfortable, is what I was trying to express, comfortable getting some feedback from the residents that have worked with him for the past six years. We didn't have that luxury with the other candidates. We were going strictly by references and, and uh, resumes. So that was my entire intention with that with that suggestion. I've talked to several employees. Dan, just a minute. Everybody else has got their turn. Ernie, go ahead. Two things. I think it's out of, out of contents. We need to follow protocol all the way down the line. If we don't follow protocol, the township may have a problem in that. Because in the past, we went through and interviewed everyone, and then we took the stance of having a special meeting to review everything. Like so we have a protocol in front of us. If you follow through on this here, we have a problem. It could be a legal problem in that some of the candidates that tur was turned down say, hey, that was a set up deal right off the beginning because we're not following protocol all the way down the line. Step by step on every candidate, this be the same thing. No difference on any of them in that. So that's something you have to look at. And being a board member, I can't, can't support this because it is different than we've done with the other candidates, and we can't move in that direction of that. The other thing is we have on your agenda for next week, if you look at that, we don't even know what the contract's going to look like. have no idea at all in that. And uh, those are things that we have to work out beforehand. And if you haven't done a lot of interviewing and hiring and that and working for different companies that have done it, then you have a problem because you don't have the background. You have had, not had the training or the classes or the seminars and doing all this. You just don't move forward like this. You have certain steps you have to take. And one of them is I brought up in the meeting we had two weeks ago, protocol, following that all the way down the line so we do not get in, into any legal problems in that, anywhere in that. That's all I have to say. Okay. Okay. Attorney here, Randy? Questions? Yes, that's gonna be my question. I don't wanna put Roger on the spot, but I guess the, the first question I have is is this appropriate for the board to do this at this meeting for one thing and um, I don't have a problem with the, the protocol because quite frankly we can do what we'd like to do um, he's our the manager is our employee we can do what we'd like to do but I just don't want to see us not do anything not legal so 
that's, I guess, Roger's um, legal right to proceed in either manner. Um, there is a considerable amount, however, of things that haven't even been discussed. So the best you could do at this meeting at this point would be to make some type of a conditional offer because you need to nail down, for example, salary, benefits, and you could make any type of offer if you wish to even go that road um, this soon, subject to reference checks or any other conditions that the board might impose. Um, so is there a legal impediment to moving forward per se? Not really, but you have a lot of practical issues that have not been nailed down or addressed at this point. Pardon me. Go ahead, John. The legal issues that have been brought to our attention are the issues that I'm talking about that would take place following some kind of an offer. You make the offer and then you negotiate the rest of it with time. Everybody who applied for this position had the right to request from the township the manager's position, the manager's duties, and the manager's salary. That's what they were applying for. They were applying under those conditions and making their name available. All that's being offered now, as I understand the motion, was to make an offer to the candidate based on what we've heard today. All those other things will take place following that. And none of it is tied down and shouldn't be tied down as a condition for making it. Roger. Um, the point I was trying to make is that any hiring process includes an offer and an acceptance before you have a contract, per se. Um, at this point, there hasn't really been enough discussion for there to be an acceptance by any candidate because there's been no, con no, uh, no discussion or nailing down of what the terms of employment would be. Having said that, you can make some type of a motion that expresses a desire to enter into an employment agreement, but it would have to be strictly conditional based upon a consensus on um, references, perhaps on, uh, input from the community, on further, uh, certainly on fringe benefits and salary and the terms of what the employment will be, because at this point you have nothing that can be accepted. So the motion, um, again, I can't emphasize strongly enough, would have to be a conditional type of motion, subject to further follow-up on a number of issues. If it's phrased in that manner, um, I see no particular legal no concerns. I have no objections. I mean. I would, yes, I'd like to phrase it as a conditional offer where we can then check references. We can then negotiate with Mr. Limita as far as salary and everything else goes. I think we've, we've gone far enough with this. We have one hell of an excellent candidate sitting right here before us. And it's my opinion that we're not going to find anybody that can fit into our system and take us into the next five or ten years any better than Mr. Limita. The second part of my follow-up question uh, involved the salary, and that has to be negotiated, obviously. Absolutely. But um, there was a statement on the cover letter that I was concerned with, 
and Dennis was making some references about his previous position and how his salary was constructed. And he was hoping that Marquette Township could con consider something similar. And then he said, if not, he would understand and return to Marquette as a retiree. So I, th I guess because the request on the application was for higher than the amount the township put in its parameters, where, where do you fit with, where, how much leeway have we got? Obviously, salary and benefits are a big part of why people accept jobs. And if you're coming into this with the idea that it's going to be, with the knowledge that it may be less than what you're willing to accept, where does the township fit into? Uh, we, we may not have a lot of wiggle room. And while we could have a special meeting and discuss whatever options or contracts we want to offer, what you're requesting is more than what we have presented, so we need to know what the deal breaker is, I guess. Maybe that's not the right phrase, but. That's okay. Where do we, you know, how much leeway have you got? As much as you want to come back here, you've made that very clear. Your, your question is much higher than what our answer is. At least answer right that now. At least right now. If we, uh, do you want to negotiate right now? No, 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 no. Um, let, let me, maybe this will help. <clears throat> I'm a member of the International City Managers Association. I'm a member of the Michigan Municipal Executives. Um, and I can tell you that, I know you guys haven't hired a lot of managers um, recently because the last one was here for 17 years. But uh, as members of those organizations, most managers' contracts are negotiated um, outside of, you know, I, you guys have a vision of where you want to go and, and what it looks like from the market, right? Um, so typically, I have a contract in mind that is based upon one that is a part of my organization um, that I'm a part of is the International City Managers Association. That's pretty standard in some of the requirements. It follows pretty much what you have for your current manager's contract. Um, it, it's, you know, where you want to go or where you, who you think your competitive managers are. If you're going to bring in a seasoned manager, um, there's going to be a certain amount of expectations versus if you're bringing in somebody who is not as seasoned. Um, if you look at, like, the, I'll give you the city of Escanaba, for example. They're, they ran a manager search because the manager accepted a position down in Florida and was leaving. He's been there for two years. He decided to go. Um, the reason he was leaving is because they didn't pay him enough money. They came back and offered him, they, I think it was $125,000 a year, to stay in Escanaba, and he changed his mind um, and stayed in Escanaba. It's about... Uh, what's the market paying and, and where do you guys want to fit in that market and that negotiation? I mean, you guys should know what your absolute um, best offer is. You want to put it together in a conditional letter. It's how we would do it. No different than when I negotiate. All of our department directors are independents. Um, when we hire somebody, we have a contract that we follow. And again, it's based on the International City Manager Association recommendations. Uh, it's been vetted by Labor Council. We use Bodman, so you guys are familiar with Labor Council. Um, it, it's, uh, it, and there's just certain parameters in there that I think are negotiable, that uh, I think are worth negotiating. And I'd be happy to negotiate. Typically what we do is we'll send somebody a conditional offer, and we'll say, we're going to offer you a conditional offer of employment based upon a successful background check, because we run criminal background checks on everybody. Um, because we think that's important for you to know, and I think I would recommend that you guys do the same thing. Uh, and then you either you put in a salary in there or benefits package or however you like to put in your conditional offer and say this is the conditional offer that we'd like to make f for you, but it's all contingent upon reference check, background check, criminal background check, whatever you want to put in there. 
And that's how I've done it with everyone I've hired down there as far as from a director's level. I think it would be a good consideration for you guys to do the same thing. I agree that maybe you do want to wait and have time to all have the opportunity to um, have a conversation. And if you want to weigh in with public, I got 12 phone calls from residents here that, you know, I wasn't candidate number four apparently because they all knew who, <laughs> who I was. But I got 12 phone calls from people so excited that they heard that I was maybe coming back. Um, three of them this morning. So, you know, I think, it's, I think it's good if you want to check more references. If you want to talk to the supervisor down in Grand Blank Township, his name is Scott Bennett, I'll give you his cell phone number. By all means, you should all call him and have a conversation with him. Um, I'm not afraid about any of the background check stuff, uh, but I do think that you should have the opportunity as a board to sit down and talk about where you want that offer to be and then present it as a conditional offer of employment for my consideration and, and uh, authorize Roger to negotiate or however you guys want to do it, a, a committee of some of you, and um, I'd be happy to, to, to start that process uh, at any time. But um, typically, I mean, it's a, it's a good way, and I think maybe you guys do need, just from listening to the, to the board, you guys maybe do need to take that time to to you know have that consideration and put that together and maybe you do want to check references or you want to run my background first before you know whichever you want to do i mean i'm okay either way go ahead john the maker of the motion has indicated he wants to amend the motion to a conditional offer as outlined by the attorney the supporter of that motion concurs. So the motion before you now is as amended. Yeah, it's a conditional offer and employment to the candidate. It's conditional. Okay, Ernie? I have no problem with the candidate. I'm just, the procedure that's followed, I just don't agree with it at all. And that, I think we need to follow a set procedure and go through it with all candidates in that. Uh, we start changing things and it's different than what we put out as advertisement. Wherever we went, all of a sudden, because of the changes in the advertisement, could we get more candidates in? Dan, you said he's the best candidate out there. Maybe because I've interviewed hundreds and hundreds of candidates, I have some idea that you don't know what's out there until they start coming in the door and that. So Ernie, I said, in my opinion, he's the best candidate out there. He's definitely the best candidate that we've seen here. And the last time you interviewed anybody was a long time ago. So this is today. It makes no difference. He's, the interview process still goes all the way through. It doesn't change in that. Uh, but. Yes, uh, Dan, differ with Dan, you. Doesn't, doesn't change. Dan, this is Ernie's the interview, time. The interview process does not change. I would recommend that you start attending some of the MTA conference sessions on interviewing and some of that stuff as to what's going on in other ones. And it's no different now or 20 years ago, 25 years ago when I was doing it that. You still have to follow the same procedures in that. You start changing midstream you end up with other problems in that. So uh, that's my feeling on that. Uh, I just don't care for the procedure at all in that. Uh, I expected, as I said in our last meeting, that to follow the same protocol all the way down the line. I guess some people don't agree with that, don't want to follow protocol in that. Uh, so that's where I stand at this point in time. Dave? Well, I think we're getting ready to back ourselves into a corner here. Um, it's 50-50 whether this motion passes or not. If it doesn't pass, then we are looking at the only way we could consider him is if we rescind the motion, which takes a two-third majority. Uh, you can't make him another offer unless you rescind the motion. So I think we're backing ourselves into the corner here for sake of a couple days to schedule another meeting to sit down and talk about it. But then the only way to prevent that from happening now is if the motion maker withdrew. withdrew. A couple days. Go ahead, Dan. The motion maker 
in lieu of, of what Mr. Limita was saying, I, I do think, yes, we should have, we should be able to make him an offer. We're not at that point. I agree. Um, I, I think that we would have enough votes to hire him, and I think we will have enough votes to hire him in a few days. I would like to, I would like to call a special meeting to get this moving forward and so that we can, at that point, make an offer with a salary with it. So we know what we're talking about and he knows what we're talking about. So he can accept it or, or not. So I will withdraw my motion. Okay, for clarification, maybe I didn't say it correctly. We will schedule at Tuesday's meeting, a special meeting to have this follow-up discussion, which is exactly what we did before. During the meeting, as the trustee or the treasurer mentioned, we will discuss the status of the manager's contract. If you remember, I brought the contract to you saying, this is what we have in place. Do you want to change it? Do you want to amend it? Do you want to leave it the way it is? So nobody really had anything to say, so we brought it up and put it back on the agenda for Tuesday. So we'll have a better chance to figure out what the salary is, what the benefits are. Do we follow the policies that are in place now? The managers, if you remember, the manager's benefit plan mirrors what the rest of the staff has. He is our employee. We can do with him whatever we want. And that was the question I asked you. Do you want to continue that or do you want to make changes? This is the time to do it before we have to provide an offer. So once we have that discussion, if, if you want to leave it the way it is, that's fine. But we all have to decide. It's not up to me or, or the current manager. So we'll have this discussion about the contract, figure out what we want to do. We'll have a special meeting. At some point we can have it Wednesday morning if you want. Figure out what we want to do with the candidate. That's the process that I was okay. envisioning. So go ahead. I just had one other thing to say about the contract is when all the candidates applied for the position, they were privy to what the contract was. So if any changes are made, they, they just can't be made other than maybe a salary we got to be careful what we change because that's what they that's what they came in at applying for the job knowing what the contract was well, the contract was not given to any of the candidates that was between us and Randy no oh, the contract is a public document available on call but I you need to do one other thing here before you move on the maker of the motion has indicated he wants to withdraw the motion. It would be normal to ask the supporter if the supporter withdraws his support. Is that what you're asking? Thank you, yes. The answer is yes. Bernie, you had your hand up. The contract, yes, is public, but we have never discussed it. We did not share it really officially with the candidates. If they found out what it was, that's fine but it was never discussed with the candidates anywhere in that. If you go back in time, we've been talking about doing something with the with the contract. We have not moved in that direction at all in that. The supervisor provided us all with a copy for us to look at, suggested changes, whatever it is, and we have not had a meeting for discussion on that at this point. And that's the next step we have to go in that. Eat. You know, we can go on till midnight if you want. No, but uh, if you, the consensus is you want to have a meeting, let's have the meeting and, and get moving rather than you know, just keep going on. Go ahead, John. One more time. I'm going to remind this board that a motion was made on another candidate, and at no time did anybody stand up and scream about protocol. They voted for that candidate to get the that's, offer of the job. That's correct. And, and there was no effort made to talk about what the salary would be or another issue. So 
all of a sudden, protocol becomes a big ass thing. All right. He's absolutely right. But we took a vote. We're not going to get carried away. But here. okay. But we took a vote. And I, I call to your attention. There's a difference being applied here. Protocol wasn't being followed then either. Not when you do what you're doing tonight. And one more thing before I'm through in here. I know all about the many times that you sat on a very wide board at the college. Not something you did as an individual all by yourself. John, we are not going to do order. individual attacks. I'm that's not admit, that's not an attack. No. That's a fact that I want known. That's fine. It has nothing to do with what's happening here. I know, but it, but I we've had our fill of John. all of protocol and I'm all. asking for your immediate resignation for harassment to a board member. That's not harassment. It is that's too. calling a fact a fact. That's all right, all right. I have enough five minutes. That's enough. Five minute enough. break. Next meeting I'm splitting you guys up. <laughs> that's well, it. I've, I've had enough. Next meeting. That's it. I got We're too finished many things with this. going on in my life. I don't need this right now. If you don't like what I do, there's the door. I've been on this board for 12 years. I had eight years beforehand here. I've had over 30 years in the township. People thought I Randy, was doing something. Now, you've been here a short time. Now you're t criticizing everything I do. I, I'm not criticizing right. everything he's John. Doing. I've had enough of it, John. John, I've had stop. Enough. Ernie. No, I've had enough. I know, I know. Just, just stop. No. We're here. To break. We're here to do the business, Ernie. We're here to do the business of the township. No, I got too much going at the house. I don't need this. Sorry, Dennis. Welcome to the UP, eh? Um, there's my agenda. It's government, that's all. Nobody likes to see the sausage made, Pete, but it's all process. Well, there's no motion, so that's yeah. so that's not there. We can move on, I guess. That's what I was just looking at. Public comment is next, unless somebody has a motion. Okay, Roger. Just one very brief comment on the contract issue. Keep in mind that your contract is strictly with your current township manager. That contract was scheduled to end December 31, was then extended by subsequent board action. So this board is not bound by the terms in that contract and is free to include additional terms or delete terms as the parties may discuss and negotiate between themselves. You're not hamstrung by that document per se. Um, on another point that came up that did have some legal implication at least, you did advertise what the salary range would be, um, and that of course is, is uh, governed by some, to some extent by the compensation system that the township has expressly adopted. Um, it indicated a salary range dependent on qualifications in it. So that also, um, you have some parameters that you're going to have to deal with that I'm just reminding you that I think you're all well aware of when you have these discussions. But the contract document itself, it can be a starting point of um, what you utilize when you make an offer, but it is not the end all. That was not expressly incorporated in the advertisements. However, the point is well taken that had you used different parameters in salary range, it may have um, brought about a different pool of candidates. Um, having said that, I don't see any particular legal issues that have arisen that caused me any grave concern here this afternoon on the proceedings that have occurred. Okay. Any public comment before we finish up here? What do you trust in Market Township? I think we should have more applicants for this job to start with. That's what I'm blaming the Township Board. Very poor discussion. Thank you.
Any board member comment? Randy? In response to the public comment, we did advertise and we did do what we could do, Will, but we, that's what we got. You didn't advertise. You should have advertised after we waited a month. And uh, uh, this is my time. Yeah. yeah. And yes, we did advertise. We did what we could. It was in the paper. It was on the, some of the professional journals that you don't see. I understand that. But we advertised where we should have, and that's what we got, okay? We, it was in the local paper. That's all we can do locally, really. I mean, but we did, and we put it on our website. Don't call us out for that, because we did the best we could do, okay? And that's the fact. Okay, so we have only one motion, actually, to review. Yeah, the only motion to review was that we approve the agenda as presented, and it was carried. Okay, so as a reminder, before I let everybody go, our next meeting is Tuesday the 7th at 6.30, and we will schedule uh, probably a special meeting at that time. We'll add it to the agenda to have another discussion about a fourth candidate and where we're going to go. Dennis, thank you so much for coming and bringing your family, spending some time with us. Thanks for the opportunity. A little more adventurous than I had anticipated, but appreciate appreciate you coming. One more motion? I move to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Let's see what time it is. 4.37, we are adjourned. Okay.